Good evening. Welcome to the evening services of the Northfield Church of Christ for Sunday, October the 11th. Uh, we will sing a few songs, have a couple of prayers, and I will deliver a message uh, rather short. Hopefully it will uh, give us something to think about during the evening, and uh, perhaps we'll look up a scripture or two, and it will be beneficial to all of us. So let's begin our song service. Uh, we are singing from uh, Songs of Faith and Praise. And so if you have your song books available, turn them to page 213. 213. The name of the song is He is Able. <clears throat> All right, is everybody ready? He is able, more than able, to accomplish what concerns me today. He is able, more than able, to handle anything that comes my way. He is able, more than able, to do much more than I could ever dream. He is able, more than able, to make me what he wants me to be. If you would turn, please, to number 578. 578. Good Twyla Paris song. We will glorify the King of Kings. We will glorify the Lamb. We will glorify the Lord of Lords, who is the Great I Am. Lord Jehovah reigns in majesty. We will bow before His throne. We will worship him in righteousness. We will worship him alone. He is Lord of heaven, Lord of earth. He is Lord of all who live. He is Lord above the universe. All praise to him we give. Hallelujah to the King of Kings, Hallelujah to the Lamb, Hallelujah to the Lord of Lords, who is the Great I Am. Don't close your book. Stay at that opening. We'll go to the opposite side of the page, to number 500. An eighty five eight zero. <clears throat> the joy of the Lord is my strength. 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 He heals the brokenhearted and they cry no more. He heals the brokenhearted and they cry no more. He heals the brokenhearted and they cry no more. The joy of the Lord is my strength. 
He gives me living water, and I thirst no more. He gives me living water, and I thirst no more. He gives me living water, and I thirst no more. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're grateful once again for a time that we can meet together, howbeit uh, in a virtual manner here on YouTube, uh, that we can sing songs of praise to your name. We can uh, approach your throne of mercy and prayer. And then we can uh, hopefully divide the word of God in such a way that each of us will be blessed by having heard it, each of us will be blessed by its content and that we might have something that we can take with us and think about and ponder and meditate upon. There are so many folks on our prayer list. There are people traveling. I ask that you would be with Lee and Pat as they travel and Bill and Noreen. Uh, I pray that you would be with uh, our friend Pat as she goes through some difficult times and bless her and help her to know that there are those that care for her and that, of course, you care for her. Our sister Melita is a bit under the weather. I pray that you would continue uh, to be with her. And uh, we're so blessed and thinking that uh, Robin had a positive test and um, that uh, 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 this was a good thing and prayers have been answered. Bless us through the uh, remainder of this service and bless us through the evening. We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. And for the last song, we're going to sing a lively one, uh, number 517. This is one of those toe tappers, so... Uh, you got some toes and you want to tap them, go for it. 517, heaven came down. <clears throat> oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day, day I will never forget. After I've wandered in darkness away, Jesus, my Savior, I met. Oh, what a tender, compassionate friend. He met the need of my heart. Shadows dispelling with joy, I am telling. He made all the darkness depart. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. When at the cross the Savior made me whole. My sins were washed away, and my night was turned to day. Heaven came down, and glory filled my soul. Born of the Spirit with life from above, into God's family divine. Justified fully through Calvary's love. Oh, what a standing is mine. And the transaction so quickly was done. When as a sinner I came. Took of the offer of grace. He did proper. He saved me. Oh, praise his dear name. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. When at the cross the Savior made me whole, my sins were washed away and my night was turned to day. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Now I've a hope that will surely endure after the passing of time. I have a 
have a future in heaven for sure. There in those mansions sublime. And it's because of that wonderful day when at the cross I believed. Rich is eternal and blessing supernal from his precious hand I receive. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. When at the cross the Savior made me whole, my sins were washed away, and my night was turned to day. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Oh, thank you for singing along with us. I uh, hope that uh, the Lord accepted this praise uh, the way we offered it to him. And just for a few short minutes, I'd like to present a lesson kind of in keeping with the theme over the past uh, few weeks. We talked about the Mount Zion and the Mount of Salvation. Uh, we talked about the dew of Mount Hermon. And we even uh, talked... Uh, uh, about uh, the mountains that uh, uh, brought the uh, fertile land to everybody. We're going to talk about a mountain that is uh, also very, very important to us. And so we'll get a little background first. And this is the Mount of Olivet uh, that we like to call the Mount of Olives. Uh, it bore the name because the uh, mountain was once covered with olive trees. At the foot of this mountain is that famous garden, the Garden of Gethsemane, which actually means the Garden of the Wine Press. And there is a brook, it's called the Brook of Kidron, that runs through the valley between Jerusalem and the Mount of Olives. There are two villages that run right near both of those, and they are both uh, mentioned in the Bible significantly. One of them is Bethany and the other is Bethpage. Bethany, if you remember correctly, was the home of Jesus' friends, Mary and Martha and Lazarus, who uh, Jesus brought back from the dead. Uh, Jesus spent a lot of hours in that home. Also, Bethany was the home of Simon the leper, one of the places in which Jesus was anointed with oil as he reclined at the table. He often walked down the slopes of Olivet, or the Mount of Olives, uh, to rest and to pray, and even to spend uh, evenings in prayer. And that is where he spent his last evening when he was arrested. Now, as one descends the Mount of Olives, it's possible to look into the city of Jerusalem. And the scholars say that it's about a 40-minute walk uh, from Bethany to the temple. As Jesus made this walk in the last week of his life, in Luke chapter 19 and verse 41, it says, He saw the city and he wept over it. Jerusalem Jerusalem, who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together the way a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you were unwilling. Later that week, uh, uh, the Lord uh, instituted the communion meal or the Lord's Supper during the Passover uh, feast, and Jesus and his disciples left there, and they went to the Garden of Gethsemane, where he was arrested. Now, after his death, burial, resurrection followed. Jesus, after the resurrection, spent some 40 days and saw many, many people, and he spent many of those days with his disciples until he finally descend, des, uh, des, ascended, I'll get that word out, sorry, that's ascended, 
ascended to his heavenly throne, and he did it from the Mount of Olives. So we have a significant geography here of something very, very, very important. So what is the lesson this evening? We got our little geography. We got our little biblical background. We will notice when Jesus said he wept over the city of Jerusalem. It was on this mountain that Jesus cried over the city of Jerusalem. And he cried because so many did not believe in him, according to Luke chapter 19, verse 41, Matthew chapter 23, verse 37. It was also on this mountain that Jesus went to pray, and this was the mountain on which Jesus asked the Father if this cup could pass from him, uh, and he would not have to go through what he knew he was going to go through. Um, He consulted with his father during this time. And during this time, Jesus was deeply grieved, as you and I would have been too, knowing the agony and um, knowing that he was distressed, knowing that he was troubled, knowing that one of the twelve would betray him, knowing that one of the trusted, one of the twelve would deny him, know that they would scatter and run away. And so there were tears on this mountain. But you know, if I left you here, this would be kind of a negative lesson, wouldn't it? And I have some more for you. I have Uh, some things for you that relate to the Mount of Olives that are very, very positive. What's on this mountain is hope. It's not only a place of weeping, but also a place that symbolized hope, not just for Jesus, but for all mankind. And it had its roots right here. It was in the garden that he was arrested and went on. But it was on this Mount of Olives that so often he went and he prayed. He went in solitude. He went uh, to his father to get instructions. And so what kind of hope is there? Well, I would maintain that there is hope by offering forgiveness. When Jesus ascended from this mountain, he entered that heavenly sanctuary to sprinkle his blood for the forgiveness of our sins. If you want to read about this, you can go into the 10th chapter of the book of Hebrews. The action of his sacrifice, which gives hope, then completed when he sprinkled it around the mercy seat as the physical priest did around the physical mercy seat, according to Leviticus chapter 16. But Jesus was about to make the perfect sacrifice. Now, the priests, before they went into the Holy of Holies, before they sprinkled blood, they had to cleanse themselves. Jesus was already pure, Jesus was the pure Lamb of God. His priesthood was an eternal priesthood. And so in that that framework, the action of his sacrifice gives us hope. It's only through that sacrifice that the wrongs that we can do can be forgiven that we can look at our lives and realize that we have done wrong, that we have sinned, and we can confess our sins to our God, and our God will forgive them. Why? Because there's hope on the Mount of Olives. There's the hope by offering forgiveness. There's another hope. That hope is the hope that comes by offering blessings from his priesthood. 
what Jesus could now do is he could go up and sit at the right hand of God because his work here on earth, his sacrificial work was complete. As we see in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3, therefore, he is able to save forever those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. Hebrews 7, 25. He mediates between the Father and you and I. And so the Apostle Paul writes to Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5, and he writes these words, Therefore, let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in the time of need. And so the hope that we have there is the hope by offering forgiveness. And then it's the hope that uh, by offering the blessings of the priesthood. The third hope that we find is the hope by offering leadership of a king. Since no lineage of David could prosper sitting on David's throne in uh, Jerusalem, according to Jeremiah 22.30. He had to ascend to sit on David's throne, to sit on the throne with God at God's right hand, Psalm chapter 2, verse 89. And so what happens to us is that we can be literally translated into the kingdom of God's dear Son. Paul writes about that to us in Colossians chapter 1, verses 13 to 14. And so from that throne, God looks down and he, he governs the earthly kingdom through his inspired word. And so part of the gift of the Holy Spirit that we get upon being baptized is that indwelling Holy Spirit. But we have the Bible, which is the Holy Spirit-inspired Word of God. And that Word is offered to us. And as Paul wrote to, to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3, familiar verses, verses 16 and 17, where it says, All Scripture is good for man, and it's good for reproof and teaching, for correction. This is one of the reasons that God laid his Bible down for you and I. Finally, the fourth hope that we have through all of this, through the Mount of Olives, is by offering to return. You know, when Jesus left this earth right there at the Mount of Olives, it says they were gazing into the cloud which had literally enveloped Jesus and the angels gave hope by saying, this Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven. All right, ready for this. Here's where our hope of his return comes in. Will come in just the same way as you watched him go into heaven. Acts chapter 1, verse 11. And so, with that promise, we have confidence that all wrongs will be made right and all rights will be rewarded. Jesus will reign until the last death happens. Then the resurrection will take place. And he will present those that have been faithful to the Father and Jesus himself unto the Father, just as his faithful followers. Paul writes that to us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 25 to 27. 
So let's real quickly review these four hopes. First, we have the hope of forgiveness. His blood that he shed offered that to us. We have the hope by offering blessings from his priesthood that he's there at the right hand of God. And he is interceding for us. We have this hope by offering leadership that he offers as our king, our eternal king. And finally, we have that wonderful hope that Jesus will return. Jesus will come back one day. And in that great day of judgment, all will be called into account for the things that they did in their bodies here on earth. For those of us who have led godly lives, this is a glorious day for each one of us. This is our day of hope of salvation. The hope that we will spend the rest of eternity with God. And so, you know what? <laughs> and we can take this with us and, uh, and, and, and gnaw on it for a while and, and chew on it. Uh, we all have a Mount of Olives. We all have one. Sometimes it brings us tears. We, we feel so hurt when some people that we really care about will not accept Jesus as their Savior, will not confess Jesus as being the Son of God, will not take the Lord into their hearts, will not obey Him into submission. And so there are tears in our hearts because of that. Just as Jesus was deeply grieved when he realized what was going to happen to him, we're grieved when we realize that people we care about are going to forfeit their eternity with God. But even more than that, our Mount of Olives, our Mount of Olives is a mountain of hope. Life isn't always filled with tears. There's hope. Biblical hope is not hope so. Biblical hope is not, oh, I hope that will happen. I hope that I get that present. I, I hope that I'm able to accomplish that today. This hope isn't a hope so. This hope, rather, it's, is a certainty. It is what we desire and the expectation that what we desire will be fulfilled. We all desire to live with our God forever and ever. And that's our hope. It's not a hope so. If we live our lives the way we're supposed to live them, it's a certainty. It is our desire backed up by our expectation. I hope you've taken this lesson into your heart. Uh, revisit the Mount of Olives and think about it and think that the Mount of Olives can be a Mount of Tears, but yet the overriding, the overriding thing about our Mount of Olives is that it's the mountain of hope. The the hope and the desire of expectation for living with the Lord forever and ever. Let's go to the Lord in prayer before we close. Our God and Heavenly Father, we 
are so blessed to be your children. The Christian life is not always an easy life. We forfeit doing some things that we used to do. Uh, we, we forfeit uh, some of those things because we know they're not godly things. And I just pray, dear Heavenly Father, that we would look at the fruit of the Spirit and, and try to engender those virtues and characteristics in our lives. I pray, dear Heavenly Father, that our, that our hope will be one of, of, of expectation, of our desire fulfilled, that we, in the realization that when Jesus returns, he'll bring us back with him. Be with us this evening. Be with our, our friends that are traveling. Be with those that have called upon you in, in sickness. And I pray that you would uh, just uh, bless them uh, and continue to be with them and help them realize that they have confidants in their brothers and sisters and they have the ultimate confidant in you who answers our prayers. Be with us through this evening, dear Heavenly Father. Be with us until the time that uh, we have the opportunity to meet again. And I just pray, dear Heavenly Father, that uh, you would bless us through the evening and help us to understand the hope that is involved in being your children. I pray this prayer in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Please stay safe and may God bless you all.